Hi guys, welcome back to Learn with Men Nuggets. In this video, we are going to discuss a case on upper GI bleeding. Let's dive into the case. A 57-year-old man is brought to the emergency department after an episode of hematemesis and lightheadedness. He has a history of anemia, intravenous drug use, hepatitis C infection with cirrhosis, and alcohol use. The patient says he has had no alcohol in about 5 days. He is on no medication. On examination, his temperature is 36.5, blood pressure is 105 over 60, pulse is 112 per minute and respirations are 17 per minute. He has scleral icterus and blood in the oropharynx. The lungs are clear to auscultation. He has a distended abdomen with a fluid veil. The laboratory results are as follows. The patient receives normal saline through two large bro intravenous lines and is started on antibiotics. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in the management of this patient? The options are factor 7 transfusion, octeotriad infusion, packed red blood cell transfusion, platelet transfusion, and Sengstaken Blakemore balloon tamponade? The answer is octeotrite infusion. This patient with hepatitis C infection and alcoholic liver disease most likely have esophageal varices that is causing the upper GI bleeding. So let's see how we can treat a patient with varicea bleeding. Initial treatment includes volume resuscitation with two large bow IV cannulas antibiotics and octeotride. Prophylactic antibiotics should be given to patients with cirrhosis to prevent infections. Somatostating analogs like octeotride cause planktonic vasoconstriction and reduce portal blood flow, thereby reducing bleeding. This patient have already received fluid resuscitation and antibiotics. Therefore, the next best step in management is to give octeotride. After initial treatment, urgent endoscopy should be done within 12 hours to diagnose and treat the active bleeding. Patients who are actively bleeding require balloon tamponade to temporarily stop bleeding until a TIPS or a shunt surgery is done. Patients without further bleeding will be given beta blockers and endoscopic band ligation one to two weeks later as secondary prophylaxis. This is the management of varicea bleeding. Now let's look at the wrong options. Option A, factor 7 transfusion. Factor 7 transfusion have not shown to correct coagulopathy in active varicea bleeding. Option C, packed red blood cell transfusion. In variceal hemorrhage, it is recommended to keep hemoglobin levels at 9 grams per deciliter. If it goes below 9, then transfusion is required. This patient's hemoglobin is 10.2 grams per deciliter, therefore does not require transfusion. Option D, platelet transfusion. Platelets are given to patients with a platelet count of less than 50,000 mm3. This patient's platelet count is 72,000 mm3, therefore does not require platelet transfusion. Option E, Sengstaken Blakemore tube is done if the patient have continued bleeding after initial treatment and endoscopy. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe to our channel. Also, check out our podcast, Med Nuggets Podcast on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. You will find interesting topics such as vaping, ozempic for weight loss, cabbage for knee pain, sleep hygiene and many more. Thank you.